Hi, William Stewart here. Um, today I'm speaking to you from my uh, recent attendance from the uh, NANS meeting in Las Vegas, Nevada. It was held at the Mandalay Bay uh, and it was again another great conference. Dr. David Carraway uh, gave a presentation and it was uh, um, titled the on-label and off-label uses of endothecal medications and the uh, Polyanalgesic Consensus Committee uh, uh, guideline review. Uh, initially, he started out discussing the polyanalgesic guidelines uh, from the inception starting in 2000 to their more recent publication in 2012 and the changes that have occurred. Interesting information and I strongly encourage you to, to read uh, the 2012 guideline. It's very, very interesting information in that, uh, that publication. Um, Dr. Carraway then also kind of drew over to some issues relating to um, Pump, uh, pump issues and, and pump failures. And um, many of you know that, that there was a letter produced by Medtronic uh, in 2012 indicating uh, uh, or, or warning physicians not to use off-label use medications. And it was controversial at the time and it was interesting to hear Dr. Carraway present some uh, study findings and issues relating to that letter and as well as the uh, North American Neuromodulation Society uh, produced a response to the Medtronic letter and uh, that response uh, I, I encourage you to seek out and read. It's, it's insightful and it will help you. Dr. Carraway kind of um, um, dissected this particular letter and then started reviewing studies that led to the letter and then what the studies also reveal. Um, a lot of uh, good information was presented. Um, you know, There's been pump failures associated with on-labeled use drugs and off-labeled use drugs. Um, there is an unknown uh, uh, issue of utilizing off-label use drugs, which are commonly uh, utilized and also referenced in the polyanalgesic guidelines, but um, kind of as a common effect. Um, you know, the pump failures do occur, and these failures are usually motor stalls, and there's a cessation of therapy. So the morbidity or adverse event of this is that you're going to have an increase in pain and a decrease in therapeutic effect. Um, but there's but treating patients with pumps is also very complicated. There are other issues as well as motor stalls. There are catheter failures and, uh, and related to that, micro fractures that relate to uh, the treatment of patients. And, and much of these have been discussed in previous meetings and in previous videos and newsletters. So treating patients with intrathecal pumps is a difficult process. It's an effective therapy, but it requires absolute attention and focus. What I encourage you to do is to take a look at the pump uh, at pump refill times, either monthly or quarterly, and interrogate the pump. Uh, there's a particular program that will actually inform you regarding motor stalls, and I strongly encourage you to review that program. Um, also related to this is that there are catheter failures that can also occur, and uh, I was unaware of this, truly this particular statistic, but catheter failures occur more often than the pump stalls. And, um, and there are new catheter products coming out to help uh, mitigate that situation. But uh, it, it was interesting is that the comparison of there are many complications associated with pump therapy. And as I said, the pilot error or due diligence, focusing your time on the patients and making sure that therapies go well. Um, after uh, that particular lecture, Dr. Christophe Perchou gave another great presentation regarding the pharmacokinetics of drugs within the intrathecal space and talked about uh, drug distribution um, and uh, gave, and more, I, I've talked about this meeting before. It was, it was another enhanced uh, presentation on this topic. Afterwards, um, Dr. Marco Salino talked about treating patients back when therapy and complications of that. And then Dr. Peter Conrad uh, gave a good presentation relating to uh, adverse events of post-implantation and uh, kind of gave some great uh, tips and discussions of when to exercise action in uh, eliminating problems associated with implantable pump therapy. Um, I had not heard of his presentation before, but uh, really gained some great information. At the conclusion, we were transported on buses over to a learning center, and we had the opportunity to actually perform pump refills on cadavers. I'm never going to probably perform a pump refill, but I enjoyed uh, and really um, was amazed at the whole process of performing pump refills and working with the cadavers gave a great hands-on approach. Uh, we were able to do pump refills with or without uh, ultrasound, something I had not done before, and there were different pumps to look at uh, how to refill those as well and work with them. Um, there was a great support staff there, uh, Gail McLaughlin, uh, Kathy Clagg, Dr. Todd Sitzman, 
all there kind of hands-on with various tools to demonstrate how to do pump refills. Um, there was actually a checklist that was devised and I will have that on our website for you to review. A very step, uh, thoughtful, careful, step-by-step -step process to perform pump refills. Um, great education to prevent problems and ensure good therapy. This is William Stewart. Thank you for your time.